In this video, we are going to create our own cryptocurrency to understand the concepts of crypto and what exactly is inside a cryptocurrency. And as a part of this video, I will also practically show you how a miner gets rewarded for doing the mining job. Hey everyone, this is Kamran and I am a full stack blockchain developer. And in this series of video, I'm going to teach you how you can create your own blockchain and on the top of the blockchain, how you can develop different dApps. And in this video, I'm going to cover the most important concepts of cryptocurrency. We will be creating our cryptocurrency on the top of the blockchain, which we developed in last videos. So if you haven't seen my videos where I created a blockchain from scratch, I will highly recommend you to go through that first. Now let's talk what extra we have to add in blockchain in order to make it a cryptocurrency. We know we can add data to the blocks of a blockchain. So in cryptocurrency, we have to add transactions of that crypto inside the blockchain. Let me show you exactly what I am talking about. So in this block class here, where we are passing the data, we can add transactions in this so that all the transactions of that particular crypto are kept immutable. So in each transaction, we are going to add three things. First will be the sender's address. Second will be the receiver address. And the third will be the amount of crypto we are exchanging in that transaction. So now let's create a separate transaction class for that. So first, let's create a class transaction. So inside this, we have to create a constructor which will take three inputs. First will be the sender's address, second will be the receiver address and third will be the amount of crypto we are going to transfer inside this transaction. So let's create a local variable for, for, for all these three variables. Now our transaction class is ready. From now for every transaction we are going to use this class. One more important concept which we have to keep in mind here is we do not mine block for each transaction. Like when, whenever we are going to do a transaction, we are not going to create a new block. Instead of that, what we are going to do, we are going to store all the transactions which are happening on this blockchain. And once there are a bunch of transactions in hand, then we are going to create a new block. And inside that block, we are going to store that all trending transactions. Usually blockchain doesn't create a block for every transactions. For example, Bitcoin mines a new block every 10 minutes and we are going to follow the same pattern. So creating a transaction and creating a block will be two different things. So for that, we are going to create a small store into which we are going to store all our transactions. So in the blockchain class, we are going to create a store uh, which will be a simple array. So in this, I'm going to store my all pending transactions. Okay, so I'm going to name it as a pending transactions and that will be an empty array and all my transactions will go inside this. So whenever I'm going to create a transaction in this blockchain, I have for that I have to create a method as well. So let's create a method create transaction. So in our cryptocurrency, whenever one person is going to send a crypto to another, we are going to use this method to do that. Every time we are going to call this create transaction, we have to pass a transaction inside as a parameter and that transaction we are going to push inside this pending transaction array. So now we have this array of the pending transactions. And from now, whenever we are going to add a new block to this blockchain, we are going to pass this pending transaction as a data to that block. So for that, we are going to change this add block method. In a practical blockchain, we can't just simply pass all the transactions inside a single block because sin single block have limitation of the data and there are lots of pending transactions at a time. For now, we are going to take all the pending transaction into that. So this add block method, we are going to make some changes inside that. So instead of passing this block as a parameter, we are going to create a new block over here. So let's say we are going to create a let block equals to new block. First, we have to pass the index and this index we can take as a parameter from add block method. And second, we have to pass the timestamp. So for that, we are going to use date now. And third, we have to pass the data, uh, which will be the pending transactions. And rest of the methods will remain same because we have to add the last block hash and mine the block and then we have to push that block into the chain. 
so this is how we are going to add our pending transaction or all the transaction in each of the blocks of the blockchain now let's try to add some transaction into a block and then add that block to the blockchain first let's do a cleanup over here and then we are going to add some transaction in our block so we are going to create some transaction first so create transaction and inside this we are going to add a new transaction that will be a transaction and here we have to pass a sender and a receiver address our first transaction will be between batman and joker so for, for first batman will send some coins to joker so let's say batman sends 100 coins to joker and then joker again send some coin to batman so first will be joker and the second will be batman and bat let's say he sends 50 coins to batman now we simply going to add that block to the blockchain so dot add block and we are going to pass an index over here so index we can keep zero or one for now let's try to see how our coin looks like now so from terminal i'm going to run node blockchain.js so here we can see that the blockchain contains two blocks and in the block two we have this data which have which contains the array and which contains our transactions so here we can see that we have this pending transaction as well so but we don't want this so for that what we can do we can empty the pending transactions after mining each block so here we have to add another line which will say that this dot pending transaction will always be an empty array after the mining a new block so here we if we print the second block which will be chain of one we'll see the data let's run this again and see it takes a little time because we have kept the difficulty at five so here we can see that this block contains our two transactions so now the question is like how a new coin is introduced to the system so for that for every transaction a miners do we are going to reward the miners with some coin and this is how a new coin will be introduced to the system so let's try to implement that in our blockchain class so in our blockchain class here we are going to first define the reward which we are going to give to the miners so this we can define as mining reward and that we can keep at whatever we want so we will keep it as 100 so a miner will be rewarded with this mining reward after he mines the block so here when a new block is mined what we are going to do we are going to create a new transaction and in that transaction we are going to send the this mining reward to minus address so for that in this add block method we will need a minus address so minus address and after this block is pushed to the chain we are going to add a new transaction to the pending transaction so here we in this pending transaction where we are emptying this pending transaction instead of that we can initialize it with a new transaction so new transaction and inside that we have to keep in mind that the sender address will be null and the receiver's address will be minus address and the amount which we are going to transfer will be this dot mining reward so let's say in this scenario i am the miner so every time when i am going to mine a new block i am going to get a reward of 100 coins so when i run a reward i want to know my balance whether it increased or not so in order to know my balance I don't have a direct access to my balance instead of that what i can do i can go through all the transactions and iterate through it and get the last value of my balance sounds tricky i will just code it out and you will get an understanding of what i am talking about so let's create a new method get balance and inside this we have to pass the address of which we want the balance so we have to pass an address and uh, in return we are going to get the balance of that address so how we can do that so for that we are going to iterate through all the blocks and in all the blocks we have to iterate through the uh, transactions stored in that blocks uh, so here in the chain we are going to iterate through all the blocks so see chain length and here we have to say that e for each block and again we have another for loop 
for each block so we will take the block dot data sorry about this so this will be the block dot data dot length and each data will be a transaction right so block dot data dot index will be our transaction so in each transaction we are going to check whether this address is present in the sender address if it's present in the sender's address then we have to deduct that amount from the balance and if it is on the receiver side then we have to add that amount in the balance so first check will be if trans address is equals to transaction dot senders address if yes then we have to minus the balance oh we haven't created a balance variable so let's create that let balance is equals to zero so if it is in the sender's address we have to minus it from the transaction amount so transaction dot amount similarly if it is in the receiver we have to add that receiver's address is same as the given address then we have to add that and at the end we have to just return this balance now let's send this code again and get the output here when i'm adding a block i'm going to pass my address as i have to get the reward money in the inside this address so that will be kamran once we add a block and pass this kamran's address as a minus address then we have to check the balance of this kamran's address so let's log that as well log kwk dot get balance of kamran before running this script we, we will just lower this difficulty so that it runs fast so instead of passing this difficulty directly as a parameter i am going to pass this as a property of this class so this dot difficulty and this i am going to define in the constructor so let's keep it two for now so just that it runs fastly so here when i am going to run this again so I can see that the block is mined. Why this is zero? Because we mined the block and we added a new transaction of sending the minus reward to the Kamran's address, but we haven't mined a new block. So what we are going to do, we are going to mine a new block. We'll see the output. So here we have this add block method called, and we are going to again call it with index two. Let's save it for now and run the script. Now we can see that the reward is transferred to the Kamran's balance, which is 100. I hope this video helped you to understand two major things. How a blockchain is differed from a cryptocurrency and how a miner gets its reward from mining a block. I hope you are enjoying this beautiful series of blockchain and understanding the core concepts of blockchain. If you haven't subscribed till now, I will request you to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell as well so that the next time when I'm going to upload a video on blockchain, you are going to get that blockchain video on your feed. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy coding everyone.